there were a lot of rumors about Pung and Xi having some differences in North Korea. And how do you find the relationship between Russia and China right now? I think it's very well. Of course, there's always, you know, there's always little, nobody gets along with everybody on every level of life. But there's much bigger issues than North Korea. And that's the United States and, and Europe. And what they're doing to both China and Russia. On the Chinese side, of course, again, as trend forecasters, we don't say we support this or don't support it. We say this is what's going on. This is where we see it going. And these are the results. So on the Chinese end, you have more and more tariffs being put on China, Chinese products and more restrictions and more companies and, and uh, financiers pulling out of China as the Chinese economy is under pressure and it's going down. So that's on the Chinese side and on the uh, and, and how they look at the United States and Europe. And on the Russian end, it's all the sanctions that the United States and Russia and the United States and NATO and its allies put on Russia and the economic uh, damage it's done to them. So there's still, you know, uh, China's buying a load of Russian oil and they're uniting against the United States and NATO, basically. So the North Korean issue is a minor issue compared to the bigger story. Yeah. In your opinion, when you look at the conflict right now in Ukraine, are we heading towards uh, new escalations or the West is getting to the point that this war isn't, it doesn't work for them. The United States just sent another $2.6 billion to Ukraine in weapons. They're going to keep fighting it. These are crazy people and that are just going to keep it going. And the United, you go look back just a couple of weeks ago where the United States and Europe sending more missiles, more, more F F F-16s, 14s, whatever the hell they are. And, um, and they're going to keep going deeper and deeper into Russia. They're going to keep attacking. They're not going to stop. Uh, I don't see it stopping. I see it escalating. And there'll be a false flag event that'll get the people to support the war even more. Yeah. But recently Zelensky was talking about that they cannot continue this conflict because of the disruption that is happening right now in Ukraine. And we had later on, we had Orban talking with him and suggesting some sort of ceasefire. But it seems that th then they rejected this suggestion on the part of Orban. And do you, in your opinion, why Zelensky was talking about this at this particular moment? He was, is he thinking of what's what's going on right now in the united states considering joe mm -hmm. biden donald trump or he thinks that this war is not going to help them after all well the reality is they, they're facing the reality they, they're losing the war we said this before the war started there's no way that ukraine is going to defeat them. if napoleon left poland with four hundred and twenty thousand troops to attack Moscow in 1812 and came back with 10,000. If Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa in World War II and killed over 25 million Russians and they were the first ones to defeat Germany, what person with a brain bigger than a pea would think that Ukraine could defeat Russia? But it's the propaganda that the mainstream media keeps selling. You go back to the facts. Let's go back a year ago. Do you remember the troop, the counteroffensive? Do you remember all of the crap spewing out of the mouths of all the experts and the colonels and the generals and the admirals and the secretary of defense? And that Stoltenberg clown over there in NATO, over there, how it was going to be so successful, you forgot? Total failure. 
total failure. We won't talk about it, though. Don't talk about it. They kept going lie after lie after lie. Again, we write a magazine. We put the facts in there. Putin government's going to be overthrown. Putin's in trouble. On and on and on, going on for over a year, year and a half. Now, let's look at some of the other facts. How much land did Russia get so far from Ukraine? Oh, about 20%. They're not giving it back. No way, no way. They're going to keep ramping up this war. We got crazy people in charge. You don't ask a mass murderer why they're a mass murderer. These are criminals dressed up in different clothes. That's all they are. That people call the government. There's a crime syndicate in a country near you. It's so amazing to hear that Jake Sullivan just talking about if Russia is going to expand the front line, they're going to let ukrainians to use american weapons to attack russia inside russia and do they really think do they have any sort of strategy in your opinion or they're just doing what they've been doing for more than two years in ukraine and nobody knows what's their main goal many people are arguing that the main goal was china but what's your take on that do they have any strategy United States hasn't won a war since World War II. They slaughtered over 3 million people in Vietnam. Lost. Million over in Iraq. Lost. Destroyed Afghanistan, the longest war in American history. Lost. Jake Sullivan? Oh, the little clown boy? That's, that, that, that's a mouthpiece? For out of his mind, Biden? It's a, they're cartoon characters. Why would I believe any crap spewing out of this little jerk's mouth? I look at this guy, he looks like the great-great-grandson of Goebbels, for the little freaky, arrogant boy. They're nothing more than mouthpieces of spewing out crap. But what have they said that has been accurate since this war had begun on February 24th, 2022? Tell me one thing. Tell me one thing, one thing that they've been accurate about. Oh, about the, giving them weapons to keep going in? Let's go back to the crap spewing out of Biden's mouth. We're going to give them weapons, but they're not going to be able to attack Russia with them. Oh, we changed our mind. What mind? The guy's out of his mind. It's the military industrial complex that's running America. Don't believe me. Once upon a time, there was a guy that was a five star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces in World War II, and two term American president, Dwight D. Eisenhower. He warns the American people that the military industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists. Sweat of the labors and future of the children. Here we are, America rotting in front of everybody's eyes as hundreds of trillions being spent over the, since then to keep fighting wars and killing people as the country's rotting in front of your eyes. Potholes everywhere. Go down to New York City, guys, drugged out, man. Homeless everywhere, crime, subway systems in night in Calcutta. The whole country rotting in front of your eyes. But we're going to win those wars. We're going to win those wars. We're going to bring freedom and democracy as they're stealing it from us in America. To other countries, eh, that's gone. It breaks my heart to see what's happened to this country. When you look at the policymakers in the United States and the hatred they have toward Russia and Putin, especially toward Putin, 
do you what are the roots of these type of behavior in your opinion on the part of policymakers in the United States? You call them policymakers. What policymakers? Arrogant little boys and girls. Nothing little pieces of crap. We were taught to hate Russia all, all our lives. When I was a little kid, and I'm born in 1946 in the Bronx, that is hiding under a desk. His air sirens are going off because the Russians might drop a bomb. And I'm in high school, they had us standing against the wall like this with sirens going off because we were too big to go under the desks in case the Russians dropped an atom bomb. They taught us, it's the military industrial complex selling fear and hatred. Russia's never done anything to America. Once upon a time, there was a real man that fought. His name was George Washington, the first president of the United States. A guy that actually fought. His farewell address warns the American people not to become involved in any foreign entanglements. He said, don't love a nation, don't hate a nation. Because if you do, you become a slave to them. He basically said that this crap has been going on for centuries. It's not up to us to solve it. And we're not going to solve it if we get involved. It's been going on for centuries. And you look at all these little clown boys that love war. Little Joe Biden, five draft affirmants. Trump, four draft affirmants during the Vietnam War. But boy, did they love war. Little Obama, Billy Clinton, little boys that couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. But boy, they loved sending other people to go fight and die for them. It's a clown show in front of everybody's eyes. Little Georgie Bush. A guy with a pair of cojones smaller than a mothball. A little arrogant daddy's boy. Longest war in American history, the Afghan War. 90% of American people swallowed the crap spewing out of his mouth. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive. Yep. Again, his daddy got him. He's, during the Vietnam War, got him in, in, in the National Guard flying airplanes. He never went fight. No, none of these guys are fighters. Real fighters don't want to fight. Like a guy like Scott Ritter, a real fighter, doesn't want to fight. Because real fighters know you don't want to fight. Eisenhower said the same thing. So too many people dead. Don't, 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 don't do this. Yeah. When you look at Europe today, we are witnessing a sea change in Europe right now. People are not happy with the policies. And do you think how long does it take for Europe to understand that they're not benefiting from these endless wars of the United States? Well, it, it's not only endless wars of the United States. They join the whole thing. I mean, you know, NATO's part of the whole crime syndicate. And the people, are, again, the people are against it because they're, they're suffering financially as well. And they don't want to keep spending their money and, and killing, keeping this going. And, and uh, then you have the great migrant crisis as well. You know, the, the countries are rotting all over the world, all the Africa, Latin America. I mean, I have to tell you, I mean, they just had a nice day in Bolivia a couple of days ago, huh? I mean, look what's going on. It, it's one after another. So people leaving, leaving countries because of crime, violence, government corruption, lack of basic living standards. So the issues are, are, are about the people losing their national identity and the government stealing their money in the name of taxes and ridiculous bureaucratic impositions that are robbing them of their freedom. Look at the tax they just put on cows and pigs and other animals in, in, in different countries in Europe because of climate change. I mean... You know, so the people are fighting against this, so they're looking for an alternative. And the, some of the alternatives, I mean, you look at what's going on in France and bringing Le Pen in. Oh, yeah, she's great on one end, boy, but she wants to keep that Israel war going. 
I mean, yeah, what the hell? What are you talking about? Why don't you mind your own business? Oh, you remember the French Foreign Legion? I forgot. You know, I'll tell you something quick. One of my lines is, when all else fails, they take you to war. Go back to the, the Israel war. People forget there were 39 weeks of judicial protests against Netanyahu before the Hamas attack. Israel's prime minister back then called it a civil war. A civil war was raging in Israel. All forgotten about with fighting Hamas. Let's go back to World War II. When all else fails, they take you to war. There was the Great Depression. I'm going to go back to France. Franklin Roosevelt, you could Google it up, seizes Japanese assets. That's right. In July of 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt seized all Japanese assets in America. And along with the British and the Dutch, they locked down three quarters of their global trade, the Japanese, and cut off 88% of their imported oil. You know why? Those dirty Japanese invaded French Indochina. French Indochina? What the hell are the French doing in Cambodia, Laos, and uh, Vietnam? Oh, the French Foreign Legion? Stealing, rubber, tin, rape, pillaging, murdering? Why, how dare those Japanese go in there? So then again, think of what they did. That's July, August, September, October, November, December 7th, they bombed Pearl Harbor. You mean they bombed Pearl Harbor because you cut off all their oil? You, they bombed Pearl Harbor because you, they, you wiped out all their trade? Can't understand why they bombed Pearl Harbor. People have no idea about what I just said. They're going to do the same thing. There's going to be a false flag event. That's going to unite the people for more war. When all else fails, they take you to war. And all you had to do is watch the presidential reality show in America between Daffy Duck and Goofy, Donald Trump and, and Biden. And you see how low America has fallen. And now pe the people want Biden out of there. They're going to get the people's mind off it with something else a false flag event that's going to unite the people. 80% of the people in America were against getting involved in World War II as it was raging already in Europe. After Pearl Harbor, they all supported it. In the European Union right now, you talk about Le Pen. She's a right-wing party. And we had Meloni, we had Meloni in Italy, but when they get elected, they, they don't care what's going on. They don't even consider what they have been talking about before getting elected. <laughs> what's, what's, their, what's wrong with them? They all do opinion? that. They lie their way into office. I Just briefly, I began my career in the early 1970s working on major political campaigns in Westchester County, which is the richest county in America. Worked for Mayor Yonkers, district attorney, state senators. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. This is the guy that runs the whole show. I designed and instructed a course called American Politics and Campaign Technology. And that's how to run political campaigns. I was in the business. I was on the other side. I know what a freak show it is. These are lying little pieces of scum that are only interested in themselves and that will do anything they can to get into politics because when you're in a political system, you don't have to work a day in your life. All you got to do is bullshit. That's who they are. They lie their way into office. I believe, by the way, the only way out is direct democracy like they have in Switzerland. The people vote on the issues. You want to go to war? Let the people vote. You want to raise taxes? Let the people vote. Let the people vote. No, we're not going to let the people vote. 
We're a crime syndicate. We're in charge. Look, you got two, two parties running America for how many hundreds of years? Look at the, look at the money you got to have to, 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 to run for office. Look at the money you have to have. You don't have money, you can't run. They call this a democracy. Because they they talk about democracy and autocracy, the national security strategy. They're talking about democracy and autocracy. They're calling Russia and China, and but at the end of the day, you see their policy. When you look at Africa, you look at Europe, you look at the Middle East, and it's unbelievable. It's just you just look at this. There are strategies that it, it's nothing there to consider. Again, it, 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 so what's your favorite war? And look at the look at the look at that. I mean, look at the, look what when how it happened when they launched the COVID war. Get back in your house. You can't go outside. Stand six feet apart. You know, I mean, making up all this kind of crap. The damage it's done is incalculable, physically, emotionally, spiritually, economically. They just you talk about Xi. They, they they launched the COVID war in China on Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, in 2020. I used to be on Hong Kong TV in 2019. There were protests going on. They couldn't stop it. A city of 7.5 million people, 7.5 million, and over a million people were taking to the streets in protest of China taking over. They launched the COVID war. Can't go out and protest. Get back in your house. Pass an emergency law. Totally forgotten. Now, going back to the economy. They, I, we had forecast the 20th century was the American century and the 21st century would be the Chinese century because the business of America is war and the business of China is business. Three years of zero COVID policy in China has destroyed the lives and livelihoods of hundreds of millions across the country. So now going back with the sanctions put on China, with the real estate bubble that was going to burst anyway has become much worse. The United States ramping up tensions with Taiwan against China. You know, there's war in the, in the, in the future if the people don't stop it. Again, when all else fails, they take you to war. I was talking about Bush before, little Georgie Bush. What preceded 9-11? Oh, the dot-com bust. Yeah. The dot-com bust. With the NASDAQ, what, what fell over 70%, 78%. Country's in a recession. 9-11 happens. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden, dead or alive. Whoop, everybody forgot about it. Go off to war. They all do it. The history shows it. It seems as much as the case of Ukraine is about to die, and we see that the tensions in Taiwan is growing and growing, and we had political movements in Philippines. They're trying to get prepared in Philippines and they're talking, they're sending weapons to Taiwan. It seems that as we see that the conflict in Ukraine cannot get nuclear, cannot we cannot have a nuclear war on Ukraine because it seems that we are heading toward the final stages of the conflict in Ukraine. But at the same time, how do you see the importance of the conflict in Taiwan and how dangerous is the escalation on Taiwan? You know, going back to nuclear, this is from your Trends Journal uh, this week. <laughs> you have U.S. nuclear subs, doomsday plan, flex off Norway's coast in a message for Russia. Then you have another article here. Putin says Russia will pr produce new nukes in response to U.S. escalation.
and again, there's the Israel war, which they're going to ramp up against uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. And Iran said that, again, it's in the magazine this week, warns Israel full-scale war with Lebanon, quote, will wipe you out. So going back to Taiwan, the United States is going to keep ramping it up. All they've done is ramped up wars. By the way, I launched a movement over a decade ago. It's called Occupy Peace. And I have peace rallies. I try to do everything I can. You know, I have best-selling books, by the way. Trend Tracking, Far Better Than Megatrends, Time Magazine, Trends 2000, International Bestseller. I've been at this a lot of years. I see the future. It's my business. If we don't stop this, we are going to be annihilated in nuclear war. All the facts are there for everybody to see and hear. But they're ignoring them. Because the media doesn't produce information that the people need to know about. I got to hear of this guy who's Timberlake got arrested for DWI drink. What are you telling me this shit for? You go to, you go to, um, it's, it's one stupid story after another. And they, they had one on CNN just today. One of the richest men in, from the families in India is getting married and they're going to have a lavish wedding. What, what are you telling me this crap for? So going back, the people have no clue what's going on. So when they escalate these wars, all they do is sell the side that they want to sell, the lie they want to lie about. And the people will follow it. Yeah, they'll go to war against China. The, these are crazy people in charge. You don't ask a murderer or a thief why they're murderers and thieves. That's who they are. Yeah. But do you think that Taiwanese would be that stupid to fight China as Ukraine did with Russia? It could be a false flag event. You don't know. The United States keeps sending more and more weapons. They just sent another $315 million worth of weapons to, to Taiwan, one of the richest countries in the world. And we keep sending them taxpayer money to give them weapons. It's the military industrial complex. You know, you, yeah, what you're saying is perfectly logical. It'd be a complete disaster. But logic doesn't mean anything. It was perfectly ill. Yeah, go back to the Ukraine war. It begins in February. In March, they have a try to have a peace agreement in Turkey, right? Yeah. And they reached it. The United States said, "No, no peace." They sent out that little clown boy that the best cartoonist in the world couldn't come up with a more freakier figure from the UK, Boris Johnson, to go kill the deal. Right in front of everybody's eyes. I talked about World War II and what Franklin Roosevelt did. One of the other, again, you could Google this up. Franklin Roosevelt seizes Japanese assets. This comes from history today, mainstream, mainstream. The other reason why they did this to Japan, seizing their assets, cutting off their oil and, and trade, the Japanese took over Cameron Air Force Base in Vietnam, which was only 800 miles from the United States bases in the Philippines and from the British bases in Singapore. Wait a minute. What are the British doing in Singapore? Oh, the sun never sets on the British Empire. We could go anywhere we want and steal what we want. And what the hell is the United States doing in the Philippines? Shifting the gear to the conflict in Gaza and Israel. And we know that Netanyahu is trying to attack Hezbollah. And the United States is just, the Biden administration is just saying that He's going to attack Hezbollah. And we, it seems that they can, they're not able to prevent this conflict between Netanyahu and Hezbollah. But when it comes to Gaza, in your opinion, when you, when you look at the 
big picture of what's going on right now in the Middle East. Who's running the show? Is the United States, is the Biden administration, or the Netanyahu, or, or the Netanyahu administration and his party? It's it's the it's the crime syndicate from Israel and APAC and all the others that are making it happen. It's as simple as that. You know, go back again. We write about this every week. All the one of our covers was uh, Biden's red line for Rafah. In other words, not to attack it is a red carpet for Netanyahu, and we have a red carpet of blood. And this is before the United States. You can't go into Rafah. You can't go into Rafah. You know, we're going to do what we want. Oh, by the way, here's some more more weapons to go slaughtering the people. Look at the look at the bombs, the two thousand pound bombs, the thousand pound bombs, the five hundred pound bombs. The United States has sent them. It, it's it's one one club. Again, Biden, and then you got Trump. And then get from this week's uh, Trends Journal. Adelson's wife, Israel's uber hawk, to become one of Trump's top donors. Sheldon Adelson, her husband, who passed away, gave Trump $100 million for his campaign. $100 million. She's going she's gonna to do the same. This is the Trump that said, we're moving the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Oh, and you know that land that Israel stole in 1967 from Syria? Hey, I'm Trump. That land is your land now, Israel. All right. So who's running this show? Who's running this show? Yeah. And in your opinion, what would be the solution to the current situation of the United States at the same time we're witnessing that you have Democratic Party, Republican Party, within Democratic Party right now, seems that there is a civil war going on that some part a a significant part of the left part of the democratic party is not is not supporting biden it seems that and how do you see the situation right now and at the same time you don't see rfk jr you jill stein colonel west we have these candidates as well how what would be the solution for this mess that we are witnessing right now in the United States. Again, it's been the same crime syndicate running running the country for hundreds of years. I mean, the two party system, and Cornell West, Jill Stein, and RFK Jr. going nowhere. You know, it's not going to happen. And you know, they they just don't have what it takes, and they don't have the money behind them to make it happen. And I, I supported RFK. You know, I, I told you I had peace rallies. Dennis Kucinich uh, is a, uh, he was RFK Jr.'s campaign manager. I had him up here as a speaker last year. I gave RFK the most amount of donation you could give RFK, uh, RFK Jr. the most amount of money you could for a candidate. And I got it all back because of RFK Jr.'s stance on Israel. He's so pro the slaughter of, of uh, the, he supports the genocide 100%. And Cornell West just doesn't have what it takes, doesn't have the look, the style that you need. And Jill Stein, you know, it, she's going nowhere. She doesn't have the money behind it to make it happen. You got to have money behind it. Again, I'm giving you the numbers. They, as I said, you don't you can, you don't have money. You can't run for office in America. It's as simple as that. So they're going nowhere, and uh, nothing's going to change in this country. It's only going to get worse unless there's a real the billionaires. That, again, I launched Occupy Peace. We don't get a penny for peace from the rich people. Could you imagine if the billionaires all gave a billion dollars for peace? Chump change for them. Chump change. Could you imagine if the billionaires put a billion dollars each for peace? Let's say the billionaires put a hundred million dollars for peace. We'd have peace tomorrow morning. Yeah. But the peace is a shit. That's why they don't do it. They're only interested in making more money. More money. Yeah. And by the way, with all due respect, it makes perfect sense because when they die, 
They're going to make these huge coffins, and they're going to take all the money with them the way they die. They'll be happy forever. Yeah. How stupid are they? How arrogant. How self-serving. Not a penny for peace from the billionaires. Yeah. Just to wrap up this session, in your opinion, how long does it take for the people of the United States, for the public opinion to understand this is not the way that should be? They understand it already. You look at the polls. People look at used car salesmen at a higher level than congressmen. Look at the polls. People have no faith in the media. Look at the polls. People didn't want either Biden or Trump. But the people have no say. America's turned into a dictatorship. All you have to do is look at that new Supreme Court ruling. The president could do anything he wants. He's the president. He could slaughter, kill, murder, steal, rob. He's the president. His majesty. Supreme Court ruling just, just came out. Yeah. His majesty. That, that's the other one. The king, his majesty. A crime syndicate. What's this king shit? King. Who the hell are you, king? Why, we don't pee or poo. We're better than you. What's this king queen crap? They're a crime family. Murderers and thieves. Look at the history of them. Oh, they're better than you are. 